and I'm being 100% extra gentle on you. It's like 90% less pressure. It's painful. <sighs> you haven't lived with long hair long enough. <laughs> <laughs> you right? Don't hold the wire. Let go. <laughs> you go. <laughs> hey, stop tilting your head, dude. <laughs> this is painful. This is not. This photo is quite pretty, though. I look so good in the mirror. <laughs> I don't. Do <laughs> it. Hello, Professor Rosemary here, and welcome to my lab. So, as you just saw, we have a guest today. I'd be remiss as a host if I didn't serve some tea, so I'm gonna stay on brand and serve up some elegant floral tea from Pokemon Cafe Mix. So, yeah, with that said, let's get making. Before starting on the tea, we'll need to make some preparations first. For these leaves and flowers, I'm just going around my neighborhood and stealing them from my neighbors. Wait, that came out wrong. I'm foraging my surroundings for a fresh floral arrangement. I'm then keeping them fresh by putting them in some water and keeping them refrigerated. Now for this design on the teapot, I'm first drafting it out on paper, then attaching it to the inside of the teapot with minimal double-sided tape. Now I have a stencil to trace over. And with the teapot ready, we can get brewing our tea. I'm simply putting around 2 teaspoons of loose black tea leaves, followed by a whole teapot of hot water, then letting it steep for around 10 minutes. Once that's done, I'm removing the tea leaves and letting the tea cool to room temperature. Now, before anyone burns me on a steak for serving cold tea, just know that we don't live in a magical world of elemental creatures, and that our world abides by the laws of physics. If I were to put in the flowers and leaves while it's hot, they're gonna wilt and the only thing we'll be serving is sadness and disappointment. So to preserve the flower's vibrance, I'm only adding it into the tea after it has cooled down. And voila! With that, we are way, 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 way. We are anything but done. I can't serve this when it doesn't look exactly like the one in the game. Hmm, but lucky for me, I have amazing and talented friends. Grace here with a background in fashion design has agreed to graciously, well, grace me with a talent by turning this thing here into a functional scrunchie. So yeah, take it away, Grace. Hello, Grace here. Let's get right into creating this Lilligan scrunchie. Here's what you'll need. Some white felt, which you can substitute by embroidery thread, a white fabric marker or paint, or even with white pom-poms for a 3D effect. Some yellow fabric. Mine was a quarter of a meter long and 112 centimeters wide. Some orange fabric of the same kind to the yellow, this time at a length of half a meter at the same width. And matching thread in yellow, orange, and white. Here I have an assortment of orange thread that I have procured from my personal stock and some were also gifted from the lovely professor. You don't need so many spools, but because I plan to overlock my edges and seam, I'll need four from my machine. Next, here are the pattern pieces that make up the scrunchie, from the petals, the yellow strip in the center, and the white details. I think I'll save the good professor from my long clip explaining how to design it from scratch and just show you the image of its general geometry. If you'd like to hear the full explanation, it'll be in my personal video. Next comes cutting out the pattern pieces. You'll need two pieces each of each colored strip, 12 white dots, and six rounded rectangles. Once we have all our pieces cut out, we come to the assembly line. I'm choosing to overlock the strips together and the inner yellow strips to prevent it from fraying as I work the pieces before closing it up. Now comes to sewing all the white detailing except the final center line that sits on the adjoining seam between the petals. We'll sew it after. Then there's sewing out the petals in all its curvaceous glory before flipping it inside out, ironing flat, and then sewing the edges together, lining up the seams evenly, and snipping off the bulky excess. Now we can attach that last white detail. All that's left is to sandwich in the elastic and top stitch. The professor was kind enough to sacrifice one of his, and just like that, we have a fashionable Lilligan scrunchie just in time for tea. And there you have it, Lilligant Floral Tea, with a piece that's not only decorative, but functional as well. If you're into fashion, makeup, or crafts, do check out Grace's channel. Actually, you know what? Go check out her content regardless, because she's truly an inspiring person to be around. 
And that's all for now, I hope you can try this out. Leave your suggestions in the comments and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.